don't believe anybody that says that there are best practices for making a video go viral. There aren't best practices. There are practices that are more worthy than others in certain moments in time. Don't be basic. Hey everybody, I'm Chris. I'm your visual anthropologist here at Cut.com, and this is Chansplaining, our little weekly check-in with you, our fans. Today, I'm supposed to be talking about how to make a viral video. Um, you know, Cut is all about radical openness and honesty, and so why the fuck not just tell you how we think about making videos with the intent to go viral? One, actually surprise everybody. Think about the setup. Think about how people interface with your video, first as a thumbnail or a Facebook post. Think about how to subvert people's expectations. For example, when we made Grandma Smoking Weed, of course that calls upon your memory of all the cliches. So we start the video with the hip hop music and the grandmas are smoking in slow motion. And then immediately, we just get so like, what? We show you the complete opposite, which is a bunch of grandmas giggling. And you never get what you think you were gonna see. That subversion of expectation, I think, is everything. Think about how to make your story compelling and give it a twist. Queefing? What's queefing? Number two, there's a difference between loud and editorial. I feel like on the internet there's this assumption that because we're all competing in a visual economy for attention, that we have to be extra, extra loud. <laughs> I think the most interesting and most viral content is cl cuts clear above the rest of all of that noise. Think about finding from your footage a story or an ethos or a, a feeling or experience, an aesthetic, that literally hasn't been produced elsewhere. Today we're gonna draw God. <laughs> so a little originality is so much better than being the loudest and the brashest that you possibly can. Have other people watch it and like watch their eyes or their body language as they're watching your piece. Any moment in which you've lost the audience is a moment they've closed out already. Videos do not need to look beautiful and slick and expensive to go viral. I want you to think, okay, what's the transformative experience that the audience is gonna have watching this video? I look like my grandma. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> hey, that's the thing that inspires us to be less of a passive consumer, but also a participant and a collaborator in the sharing of this piece. Number three, design your video. Don't decorate it. I think when you're doing the post-production with your own footage, um, there's a temptation to put millions of different sound effects. <laughs> millions of different fonts and titles. Why? Why? And emojis and change the music every five fucking seconds. <laughs> Reality, when we're in this attention economy where people's literal attention is so fragmented and so rare, think about the, the bare minimum that you have to do to tell a compelling and interesting shareable story. Number four, understand that viral videos are shared outside of the internet. We have this idea that internet fame and virality all happens on our computers and with people sharing, but it actually isn't always the case. It's literal face-to-face -face conversations. Like, your video should be so self-contained that someone could go out into the middle school or, you know, at the barbershop and say, oh, you guys gotta watch this video. It's about A, B, and C. Number five, be lucky. Don't assume that if you make something and it doesn't go viral, that it is your fault because there's thousands of factors beyond your control. Some of them are algorithmic and some of them are just chance. Um, the inverse though, is if you make a video that does get millions of views, don't think that that has anything to do with you. That might just be chance or Ashton Kutcher shared it on his Facebook. In fact, I think most of us get into the trap of feeling like if we reiterate the things that we already made, and we'll have more success in the future. And this just goes out to all creators and all media. Don't be so precious with your own work. You need to really leave your body for a second and imagine if you stumbled upon this video on your Facebook feed, would you make it past the first five seconds? Right, you have to be so critical in about every single millisecond of film that you put out there. 
So there it is. Five easy ways to make a video go viral. I invite you all to try, because why not? Life is short, and we're all tired of media the minute it's produced. So make more. Okay, I think it's time again for some of your comments. Okay, here's a question from Larissa Pelikan. Is jemand hier Österreicher und hat sich gerade auch so kaputt gelacht wie ich? Um, ich bin kein Österreicher, aber ich bin kaputt gelegt. Fuck, did I say that right? No, ich, ich habe mich kaputt gelacht. Danke sehr. This is from Raghunath? Sorry if I don't know how to say your names right. At first I was like, what is this chance-planning shit? Just post normal videos. But now I'm beginning to like these kinds of videos. Also digging the Chan replies. By the way, what is Chan's designation at cut? Well, thank you for like digging this chance-planning shit. You know, that's nice. Um, I'm a visual anthropologist here, but I'm also something of a producer. Um, and I sit around and tell people what ideas I like. <laughs> Somehow that's a job. Uh, but I'm also doing an ethnography of cut, so I'm an anthropologist writing my dissertation for my PhD, um, and I actually study the people here, and the ways we work, and the ways we relate. This is from Zach Meister. Will you ever do a video where you introduce every member of the team? I would love to know more about them. Well, good news for you, Zach Meister. We put that on the calendar, so look for it soon. You'll get to see all of the faces of cut. Okay, uh, this is from Louis Duploy. I think that you should include more teenagers, which are missing these days. It's been a while since you didn't include 14 to 18 year old people, which I am sure you could probably find an interesting subject on. You know, the teen years are super interesting. But here's the awkward thing in the United States, if you want to film teenagers, they have to have their parents on set with them legally. And we're not about to ask a bunch of teens some awkward, cringy stuff about sex, drugs, and rock and roll in front of their parents. But we have had teens on before. And we hear you guys. We like teens too, so we'll invite them. We'll think of something. Well, thank you so much for all of your comments and for watching Chansplaining. Thanks for watching our channel. We love you guys. Uh, keep leaving comments below. I'll definitely read them, or someone will. Until then, I will see you in hell. Bye.